Kate Morris here for MA UK. We're joined today by UFC middleweight Mark Munoz ahead of his upcoming fight at UFC 184. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing good, Jay. Thank you, thank you for having me on the show. No problem. It seems a bit busy behind you at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just got done training. I'm here. I'm at the gym. And um, but there's a bunch of kids behind me training. So this is why I love doing Sounds perfect. <laughs> now, um, you're facing a new opponent, Juan Carnero, who's just re-signed back to the UFC. How has um, your fight camp been for this fight and what are you doing to prepare for this new opponent? The fight camp has been amazing. I, I've, uh, I have an, uh, an amazing team. I actually, uh, after the last camp, my, my management and my coaches came in and did an intervention on me and they said, Hey, you got. You need to do something different, you know, because they said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting this the, a different result, you know. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they said, you know, you you're you've been a perennial top five middleweight for a long time, but you training the way you you've been doing and not recovering and doing all these things for the community. You need to be a fighter first. And so they came in and they basically said, you need to train to be a top a top elite athlete. You can't do all this stuff. So, so now I'm not running my own camp anymore. I got all my coaches telling me um, you need to rest and recover. And I'm not teaching, as you can see, I'm not teaching in the background. Um, but, um, but yeah, right now I'm actually just uh, listening to my coaches. All my training partners are amazing. Um, you know, Michael Bisping just joined the camp. He's he's great. Uh, so it's just, man, I, I got amazing training camp with, with like, um, and I don't want to forget anybody, but I have Tom Watson, I have Pat Cummings, I have uh, Tony Ferguson, uh, Jose Los Anjos comes here in Spars. Um, we have um, Jake Ellenberger. Uh, man, I'm forgetting people. <laughs> well, you've got so That's many so top good. level guys there, so. Yeah, I'd be yeah, impressed so if you remember them all. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm forgetting people, and they're going to say, man, you forgot me. So, <laughs> I'm going to get messages later. He, he forgot me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask you actually because obviously um, I was going to ask what your mindset was going into this fight because obviously you are such a high level fighter but you coming off these two losses so I was going to ask does this put more pressure on this fight or are you just more keen than ever to get back into the cage? Uh, you know, it, it doesn't put any that much pressure on. You know, I, I actually been in a position throughout my whole life. I've been competing since I was 13 years old in wrestling, and and um, you know, pressure when it deals with pressure, like that's that's when it actually comes together for me. You know, even when I was in school, when I was in school, when I was like the deadline was getting closer and closer, I was like, oh man, I better get this done, and and I would get it done and get it done great you know so for me pressure is is what makes me what makes me uh become better and and this fight actually yes coming off the two losses which you know i you know i never wanted you know i i didn't train the way i would like but but hey that's that's how it goes sometimes and you know with adversity you got to be able to jump back up to your feet and and face it once more and and just find success through it, and I and I truly believe that that resilience throughout your adversity will let will help you achieve your desire. So R A D resilience, resilience, adversity, desire, live a rad life, right? That's what I always say to all the kids. You gotta live a rad life. You gotta have a rad life, right? You gotta have resilience through your adversity to achieve your desire. And and for me, that's that's what it's all about. You know, I I'm not a guy that that just uh, that quits you know i don't quit i tell all my kids you better not quit you better go through you better go through with with what you started and and that's the type of guy i am there's still a lot of things for me to do in this sport i am a top middleweight and i want to get back up there you know and i'm doing things right and you know i've had four injuries in the, in the last four fights that's just indicative to how my body was responding to my overtraining and and then all my coaches and, and the training the training lab here back here in my gym, the coach here said, Hey, you know, this is what's happening in the cellular level with your body. 
cortisone, uh, cortisol is getting secreted in your in your uh, in your body because you're overtraining. You're not you're not resting. You're you're uh, you're not recovering, and so that's your your body is holding on to all the all the everything it can hold on to, and thus all the injuries start coming thereafter. So that's what was happening to me. So after my last fight, I tore my MCL, strained my ACL, and it was just it was it wasn't a great fight for me because I couldn't complete the fight. I couldn't I couldn't do what I usually do inside the cage. So, with that being said, sorry, it's a long-winded answer. No, it's fine. Um, it's great. <laughs> uh, for me, for me, life, life and, and MMA, they run together and wrestling runs together because once you get in a position where you're being held down, you got to find a way out. You know, just like in life, you got to find a way out. You got to find a way to win. You have to. And, um... And there's going to be a lot of chances for you to redeem yourself every time. This is my chance to redeem myself. Uh, and I want to be back in the top in the top three, top five, even top one. You know, so, um, so yeah, this is, this is who I am and this is what I want to do. It sounds like regardless of the injuries, we're going to see a new and improved Munoz in the cage. <laughs> um, how do you see this fight going down? Have you thought about that? Do you want to finish? Oh yes, I definitely want to win this fight in, in convincing fashion. Uh, he he is a well-rounded fighter. He's 19 and nine. He won Battlegrounds MMA, which is a tournament. He had to fight three times in one night. Uh, he fought in the UFC prior, uh, three years prior to that, and fought you know John Fitch, uh, fought uh, fought some other guys, some other big names. But at the same time, he's coming up from welterweight to find me at middleweight. And um, that's a tall order because I'm a big middleweight. And, um, you know, for him, it's it's going to be hard for him to, to, to deal with my pressure and my strength. But at the same time, I'm very fast and, and I'm going to go after him. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit back and... And, and react, but I'm going to be proactive in this fight and go after him. So whatever position he gets in to, I'm going to look at the finish, whether on the feet or on the mat. So it sounds like it's going to be a very exciting fight, so we all look forward to that. Um, yes. On another topic, so Chris Weidman is injured and out of his fight with Vita Belford. <laughs> and you already know what I'm going to say, don't you? He obviously wanted to stay on the card. He said, I want an interim title bout. And then he called called you out. Did, how did you hear about this, and what was your reaction? Actually, a lot of people are like, "What? He's calling Mark Munoz out. He already has a fight." But I'm like, "What? Bring it on, man! Like it don't matter. Like come on. Like he thinks I'm gonna be an easy fight. It's not gonna be an easy fight. I'm telling you. Like it's like I think the reason why he called me out though is is the fact that he was fighting a wrestler, preparing for a wrestler." And he wanted to fight a wrestler. And then the first wrestler he thought of was, lo and behold, the Filipino wrecking machine. So, so this is this is me, you know, and, and I, that's 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 my logic behind it. You know, I didn't think I didn't think he meant anything uh, uh, condescending by it, but but at the same time, if he wants it and the UFC approves of it, great. I'll be I'll be happy to I'd be happy to go five rounds with him and, and grind him and, and put him on the ground and show some, uh, play some Donkey Congas for sure. <laughs> well, I'd definitely love to see that then. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of the Philippines, obviously, as you know, UFC are going to the Philippines, which I'm sure you're yes. excited about. But yes. that's only 10 weeks away, so it's 10 weeks after your fight. Can yeah. we possibly see you on that card? I'm sure you're probably pecking at Dana to get on it. Yeah, you know, I I, um, I really want to be on that card. There is no way I want to miss that card. So it even puts more motivation in my heart to, to win this in convincing fashion, come out of this fight unscathed. But, you know, hey, a fight to fight. Things can happen, you know, so... I'm not totally ruling this out. I'm not. I'm not looking past Juan Carnero because he's a formidable opponent. But at the same time, I want to be on that card, you know. And and when they when they announced that card, I was so happy. I was like, yes, they're finally going to the Philippines. But wait, 
It's March 16th. Yeah. It's like 10 weeks after my fight. What? So I called Joe Silva. I'm like, hey, Joe Silva, like, what's going on? Like, you know, Dana, what's going on? They're like, hey, man, just don't get hurt. <laughs> and I, how can I guarantee that? You, you're in. You know? I don't think so, they dared go without Mark Muniz. It just wouldn't be right. <laughs> you're right. And, and I've been, I've been, I've been rallying the troops for this car to, to come to fruition and and it, it would be it would be I would be man, I would I would cause a, a, a revolt. You know, if, if I was if I wasn't on that card. So but uh, but my good friend my my good friend is on that card, the main event, which is uh, Uriah Faber who got me into MMA, who got me who convinced me to do MMA when I was was that when I wanted to just be a coach for for the rest of my career, he got me into MMA. So, I, you know, I love Uriah like a brother, man. He's he's unbelievable, an unbelievable leader, unbelievable fighter, and a great friend. So, um, he's the main event on that card, and I want to be on that same card with him and and share that and share that experience with him. And and the Philippines, they're so near and dear to my heart. I don't want to miss that card. And I want to be on that card. I'm so excited that the UFC finally realized that the Philippines is an awesome market for MMA. And I want to do. I want to be the pioneer. I want to be the. Uh, I want to be the guy that leads the expansion in, of MMA in the Philippines. So I'm gonna make frequent visits out there and and uh, and develop that country as best as I can. You just turn up anyway. Just like Dana, I'm fighting regardless. <laughs> I could see you doing that actually. If, if I have a broken arm, I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting with the cast. Just throw me in. Yeah, with the cast. Whatever. I'm going. I'm there. <laughs> put me in the. Put me in the octagon. I'm there. I'll kick him with I'll the be, cast. I will be there. So I will be very shocked if I don't see you on that card. So I'll, I'll tell Dana off as well. Like, why is Mark Munoz not on this card? <laughs> you better tell him. You better tell him likewise with everybody else. <laughs> everybody else better say Mark Munoz better be on the Philippines Manila card. I will. I'll start better, a petition for you. <laughs> I'm commanding everybody to do that. Social media, hit the UFC. <laughs> I everybody promise please. now. It's on video, so I definitely have to. <laughs> That's right. And I'm pointing. I'm giving you the point. Oh, no, no. I'll give you the fist emoji. This is not emoji. This is real life. Right? You put the emoji like you're gonna punch me, Jay. Remember that. <laughs> this is real life, right here. Boom. Listen, I'm not afraid. I can train. I'm very I short. Know. It's deceiving. Hey, you would beat me. You I've already me. said I I will beat you. Yeah. I didn't get to go to rain last time, but I'll I, definitely come back. I I don't want to fight you, Jay. <laughs> it's like a it's the small ones you've got to look out for, Mark. Unfortunately. Yeah. You're a stick of dynamite. I don't want to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, last question, because I know obviously you're quite busy today. So, you've recently uh, signed a new contract for the UFC, right? Is yes. It a, is it a four-fight contract? You'd yeah, thought? four fights. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. there's no way you can't put you on the card then. So, we should see you a few more times this year. Yes, for sure. You should see me a few more times. So, I'm, I'm excited and, um, you know, although I had the... A skid I've had as of late, going one in one out of three fights. But I've been fighting the top guys, you know, and and I don't shy away from fights. I don't I don't say no to fights. And even when it's late replacement fights, I still take them against a good friend of mine who I trained with for four weeks before that. You know, so it's like I don't know, man. Like that, that's that's who I am, and I'm a company guy, you know. And I, I represent the UFC, and I try to represent the UFC as best as I can. And um, you know, and try to do it with character, integrity, and leadership. You know, that's that's everything I try to uphold, and and um, and you know, that's what I'm gonna do. You know, from for the duration of my career. So this is uh, this is who I am, and this is who I'm gonna be. Well, you're a very entertaining fighter, and we look forward to seeing you in the cage. So good luck with all your training, and thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Thanks.